Hi there, and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the M40. I thought I had a video on this up, but apparently I didn't. So, this today is what we're going to be working on calibrating. It's the Industrial Scientific M40. It's a real nice, easy one to calibrate, so without further ado, just turn it on. You're going to press this power button right here, hold it in for a second, wait till it beeps, and then release it. It's going to start up, it's going to give you a quick countdown. If you want to get into the options on this unit, limited as they are, the way to do it, while well, it's in its countdown, is you press the left and the right button at the same time. And that'll put you into an options mode where you can go in and you can change things like whether or not it's calibrated to methane action pack. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Press the two buttons on the sides, and it'll take you into an options menu here. Now, what it's showing right now are the low alarms. I'm going to bring this up a little closer so you guys can see, try and make it so it doesn't get so much glare. Got the low alarms here. Now, as so we press the button on the right, it's going to cycle through. Now, these are the high alarms. Here's our TWA and our Stella alarms. Now, if you can go through, the next button is going to take you to the clock. Now, as you can see right now, the clock has uh, the wrong time on it. That's because I was just repairing this model. But uh, from here, if you want to edit any settings, press the enter button, and then you can adjust using the up or down arrows. So we're going to keep going right now. We're not going to take a look at that right in a second. And then here's the, the calendar function, so now you can set the date in there as well. The lock, and now here's the LEL setting. The reason I, br I bring this one up is because a lot of the M40s out there are set to calibrate with pentane. And if you've seen any of my other videos, I always recommend switching this from pentane to methane. Now the way you can tell is if you look here, it'll be set to 25. So you can see right there, see how it's set to 25? That means the monitor is supposed to be calibrated with 25% LEL pentane. Now this is what industrial scientific recommends, but if you're going to be going looking for natural gas in any way, shape, or form, you're going to be around methane, you should always calibrate using methane. And I've done some other videos to that effect that show you why not to calibrate with the true pentane standard. So what I do on all of these monitors, I hit the enter button, move it up once, and that takes us to going 50% LEL methane, you can see that there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit the enter button again. Now we're set to go right into normal operating mode. And the way I do it is I always go through here, just hit this power button. And now you're right back where you need to be normal operating mode. Now you can see this this one's a little bit inaccurate. I'm going to try and turn off this light so you guys can see a little better. You know, it doesn't help much, sorry. All right, back on we go. Okay, so looking at the monitor here, you can see it's at negative 2. We're going to need to calibrate this monitor. In order to do that, you hit the, this right button here once, and it takes you to a screen with a zero with a line through it and a enter button. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the enter button and now it's going to zero the monitor. While it's doing that, we're going to put our cal gas and take all this together. What you're going to need you're going to need a 0.5 liter per minute regulator, your calibration cup, the, the tubing between it. You're going to want to get all this assembled beforehand. Now you're going to want to screw the regulator into the cal cylinder. The first thing you do is unscrew this regulator every time. Otherwise you're going to jam room air into your cylinder and you might screw up the values of in, that are in there. Moisture in the air gets in there and affects the calibration gas. So now it's blinking with a little cal symbol. You can see that. We're going to hit enter. Now it's going to put it into cal mode. And the first thing it comes up with is a 100, a 25, and a 50. And what that's showing you is it's saying these are the values that you need to calibrate. So you're going to want to take a look at your calibration gas cylinder and you're going to want to make sure that the values on your cylinder match what's on your gas monitor. Now don't use my cylinder here as an example. I blended this one myself so that I knew what was in it. And it's just a cylinder we have here in the shop. So what you're going to do is put your calibration cup on like so and then turn the gas on. Now what will happen is the monitor will recognize when there's cal gas being applied here and it will start to go into calibration mode. See how it just it stopped blinking there? Now it's coming up with the actual values. Let's bring this up just a little bit. There we go. So now it's going to go through the calibration. Now this one takes a little bit of time for calibration compared to other instruments, but it's not that bad. And you'll notice on industrial scientific monitors, they don't go up to exactly the values that you're looking for. You'll see they have this higher value. For instance, when we calibrated this with 100 parts per million carbon monoxide, it's showing 142 for carbon monoxide. This is called their span, span value. And what it is, it's kind of a span range. As the monitor loses sensitivity, these numbers will drop. 
they'll no longer you see how this one's getting up to 42 that means we're real healthy on the h2s but eventually it'll only be able to get up to say 23 or so of the 25 parts per million that are in the cylinder then at one point it'll be up to 20. around 20 or so usually they say about uh, I believe it's around 50 percent of the value that you, you're seeing here versus on your cylinder, it will fail the, the sensors for you and will say, hey, you guys have to replace the sensors on the instrument. You can't calibrate using the sensors currently. And what that basically means is that your sensors are just too old, they've seen too much gas, and it's time to retire them and get new sensors. Okay, it's given us a beep, and now it says P. These are the final span values. If you want to, you can record those, and they kind of give you a heads up as to when you're going to need to buy new sensors. But that's about it. It's going to go into an alarm once you pull it off, and that's okay. You just hold my thumb over the little alarm button here. Let them all go down. Make sure once it finishes the calibration that you guys turn your gas off so you're not wasting a lot of gas. Okay, you can see all the values are coming back down here really easy. And we're going to wait till those go to zero. And the carbon monoxide is taunting us here a little bit. Okay, there we go. 0, 0, 20.9, and 0. So you know you've had a good calibration. Okay, I'd like to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to call us here at Ideal Calibrations. Our number is 734-956-0539. Or you can email me. My email address is james at idealcalibrations.com. If you have any questions about any gas monitors or there's something you'd like to see, whether it's how to repair the screen on one of these or how to replace a sensor and some other instrument out there, just feel free to give us a call. Or if you have any questions or need any calibration gas, we can provide that as well. Thank you much. You guys have a great day today. Bye-bye.